y'all thanks for joining me today i'm gonna do a grocery store haul and then do a cook with me for pot roast and collard greens If you're watching this and you're from the South, you're probably very confused right now. But this is how they sell the greens up north, y'all. This is how they do it. And I have seen like one place that's outside of the city where they sell it like we do like in Bunch. But I did not want to drive 30 minutes just to go get a bunch of greens. So this is what we're working with today. This is, this is, yeah. And I do have some more at home, but this is what we're working with today. Okay y'all, so now that that's done, it's time to get started with my roast beef. And y'all can use different kind of cuts, but I use the chuck roast cut. And after it's out of that packaging, don't put it on your board, go rinse that thing off. So I rinse off my meat and now I'm back to start seasoning. And you wanna make sure that when you start seasoning, you start seasoning on all sides. So just go ahead and keep that in mind and get ready. So I'm starting off with some salt here. Um, people like to use the sea salt, um, but I didn't have sea salt and I didn't want to buy sea salt. So I'm going to use this regular salt and it's going to be fine. And then I use the black pepper, same thing here. People use the peppercorns, but I'm just using black pepper grounded. You'll notice when you're doing it, your meat be twisting all around and stuff, but don't worry, like, just try to work with it the best you can. After this, we're gonna massage it anyway. And you see I'm moving back all the crevices, making sure to get pepper on the inside. Um, and I will continue to do that with the rest of my seasonings too. So I really don't like onions like that, um, but I'm adding this onion powder instead of adding some fresh onions. And now I'm adding some garlic powder um, and then I've already set out my beef bouillon to add to the meat, but also to add to my gravy for later. And I'm adding basil, parsley, and rosemary. I was almost out of parsley, so I just 
kind of try to use it sparingly but you definitely want to use all of those ingredients to get that flavor going there is one ingredient that i forgot that i usually add which is thyme but i usually just take like four whole thyme leaves and put or like the string you know what i'm trying to say the string that the leaves come on i just take that whole like four of those and put them on each corner of the meat when it's in the crock pot and you'll see here I'm sprinkling the sides but I also pat the sides on the board to pick up all that seasoning that fell off and try to get it on the sides of the meat. Now I'm just mixing it around, you know, patting it in, squeezing it in, trying to make sure it really gets in there on the sides and the top. I like to sear my meat before I put it in my crock pot. So Y'all just saw me using olive oil and putting olive oil in the pan that I'm going to be using now. Um, just a little, enough to cover the bottom because this is a ceramic pan, so it's not like it's really going to stick to it anyway. But the oil is just, um, we're going to add that oil to our crock pot as well. So that's why we're putting a little bit more than probably needed. Now I'm just stabbing the meat to get it tender, but also to get some of that seasoning down in there. Um, that's why I I think you could either stab it before or after. I don't really know if it makes a difference, honestly, um, because the season is going to get in there. Um, but maybe you want to do it first. I've done it both ways, and it's good either way. So, But you definitely want to stab it so all the flavors can get deep into it because this is a thick cut of meat. It's very, very thick. So, yeah. Okay, so my pan is all heated now. Um, I'm just gonna sear the sides a little bit um, because it's generally not going to, you know, I don't wanna hold it up later. So, <laughs> like once it's already hot, so I'm trying to sear the sides a little bit now, just a little so that we can get some color on it. And I'm gonna move it back over the stove. But I just wanted to show y'all like what it looks like and how I'm gonna lay it in the pan. While that's cooking, we're going to start cleaning our area because we do not want cross-contamination, don't want no germs, any of that stuff. Um, and we want to prep our veggies that are going inside the crock pot. So that's how we're going to be like, you know, putting everything up and wiping things down. Personally, I like to use tongs when I'm transporting this meat, flipping it, moving it. Um, very firm tongs because it's heavy and I already put some of the beef um, stock in it in the crock pot so it could be heated up not a lot just enough for you know for some heat and I just put the oil and the roast in there um, so yeah everything's about to start getting put in I had already cut up the vegetables and things off camera so I'm adding them now you just want to use big pieces of celery because if you don't then they're going to dissolve like everything you put in this crock pot that you're not necessarily going to be eating on you want them to be big oh i forgot i did put some onions in here but i didn't use that video so i still needed the onion powder um and the reason that even though we are going to be eating potatoes the reason that we want those to be big is so that they don't cook too quickly like before the roast gets done cooking even though it looks you know fairly cooked here it's really not so not the inside it's just seared um, on the outside so yeah after your Worcestershire sauce or however you say it. Then you want to add some more beef stock um, to it just to cover everything. 
I add that much because I like a lot of gravy and I want my gravy to last me through my whole meal. So, I mean, you can put less than this, but this is how much I like. Okay, then I'm just adding some cold water and flour to the mix so that the gravy can start doing its thing and start forming then. And we already added some olive oil, you know, from the pan, but I like butter, so I'm adding some butter. So now that that's cooking, even though there are some veggies in there, I want some greens. Now, y'all <laughs> know that we do not have greens that look like this in the South. We have some real greens, but I'm in Chicago, so this is what I'm working with. I'm just cutting out any bad parts I see in it. I could pick it off with my hand, but I just decided to cut it this time, especially because these greens are so small that, you know, it's, it's, it's just a lot of effort to use my hand instead. See, that's a bad leaf right there, so I'm not even gonna use it. I'm gonna just put it to the side. Um, but yeah, so, and I cut the stem off because I really don't like the stem. The stem is very bitter. Um, and maybe you do like it, cool for you, but I'm taking it off, so, yeah. And while I'm cutting and prepping for cleaning, then I always put on whatever cooking meat I'm gonna use. Um, I do use smoked turkey, but I also use smoked ham hocks um, and hog jaws, like whatever I have at the time. I think I've used bacon before. Um, so yeah, and then I also put some vinegar in my greens uh, while they're cooking, and it's good, y'all. Y'all gotta try it. I had washed the greens several times, but on my last wash, I like to add some salt in there and, um, you know, let them soak for a little while after I massage all the salt in. So that's what's happening now. That's just gonna sit for like 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna rinse that off and put them in the pot. 
I know y'all looking like that's not even a full pot but there I had some that I had already washed and frozen um, so that I could use but I just felt like I needed just a few more so that I could freeze them and make them over a few days so that's what I'm gonna be adding first the frozen ones and then I'm gonna come back and add these after check on your pot roast too often because the heat leaves from the crock pot super fast but uh, this is just me testing the potatoes and trying to figure out you know test the meat see where everything is it's coming along good but we're not there yet so everything is just gonna cook a little while longer This is perfect timing. The greens look good. The pot roast looks good. Everything is done. I also cut up my pot roast, so that's why you see it like that. I cut it out and let it cook for like 30 minutes when it's cut up. In total, I believe it took four hours for the pot roast to cook in the crock pot. Uh, but yeah, now everything's ready. I'm gonna make my little meal. Thank you all for watching. I'm so glad you guys came. I hope you like this video. Comment down below what you want to see me cook next. If you tried this recipe, what you like cooking, what's your favorite dish that's going to last you a while. Because you know in grad school, you can't just be cooking every day. We got stuff to do. We got papers to read. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm going to freeze the rest of this. So what do y'all make? If y'all are in grad school, or even if you're not, if you just got kids, you just got a busy schedule. What do y'all make in the in-between time? I will catch y'all on the flip, catch y'all next time. I'm gonna just let this sit in the pot until it cools down and then I'm gonna freeze it. And of course, I'm gonna add my greens and sourdough bread on the side so I can use that for that gravy. So, yes, thank y'all so much and I'll see you next time. When we play our roles and